Happy Tuesday, and this is my final True Crime Vampires in History in this series. Now we're going to talk about the one I said we were going to leave for last, and that is none other than the Countess Elizabeth Bathory of Exed, also sometimes known as Ersabeth. She has a couple of interesting nicknames, alleged to be one of the most famous female serial unalivers in history. She was born under House of Bathory in the Kingdom of Hungary on August the 7th of 1560 in near Batar, Hungary. I hope I said that right. Another interesting bit about her is that she was related to a king of Poland and had a nephew who was a prince of Transylvania. Some think that this might have made her a possible inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. Of course, there are many different source materials that people think might have inspired, inspired Bram, as I've said before. And Elizabeth had several nicknames. The most infamous is the Life Fluid Cantus, or the Life Fluidy <laughs> Lady of Cachetis. Now, Elizabeth and four of her servants were alleged to have tortured and unalived hundreds of girls and young women between the time years of 1590 and 1610. It is estimated that they unalived a possible total 650 victims. Now, Elizabeth was accused of a litany of horrific crimes against both female girls and servants who were servants or young women and also noble women and they said that some of these noble women had come to her for training and for education and supposedly the majority of her alleged assaults and unalivings took place about the time that she became a widow which was around 1604. Here we can get into some of the descriptions of some of the things that she was accused of having done. During the coldest parts of the year the most freezing months, she would often have young women stripped naked and forced to take an ice bath. Um, she sometimes tortured girls by driving needles into their fingers, cutting on their noses or their lips, and whipping them with stinging nettles. She was also known for biting often in the shoulders and breast area, as well as burning flesh, um, including the, um, of some of her victims. Though people were never quite sure why she did this, the nature of her attacks suggested that she might have had an XUL, um, motivation. But it is impossible to completely determine what compelled her to do these things. A, another allegation associated with her was the idea of consumption of these young women and girls' life fluid in order to maintain her physique and her beauty. So there has been a legend around Elizabeth regarding her doing this in order to maintain a sort of youthful appearance and beauty and for the same reason she was said to not only consume the fluids but also bathe in them and she had a preference for young life fluid in particular because she believed that this is more potent and powerful and would aid in her vanity as she saw this as a form of sort of a fountain of youth if you will. On December the 29th, 1610, the Count Georgi Trzo, who oversaw ju judicial matters in Hungary, arrived at her castle in Kachtis to investigate the Countess's alleged crimes against women of noble birth. Unfortunately, which is not uncommon, the mistreatment of her servants was not of concern to the authorities. They did not truly care until this began to be an issue with other noble young women. Supposedly, his visit came as much of a surprise to Elizabeth, and she was actually in the middle of tormenting a victim, and his response was to immediately imprison her within her home, because as a high-status noblewoman, they could not jail her like they could a common criminal. 
1610, she was sentenced to home confinement for her crimes, which is where she stayed until the time that she perished um, on August the 24th, 1614, at 54 years of age. Now, four of Bathory's servants, three males and one female, were then arrested, questioned, and subjected to torture, and their court proceedings began in early 1611. Those servants denied their culpability in any of the alivings, but admitted to being ordered to burying multiple victims, though the number of their accounts varied anywhere between 36 and 51 people. There was no real actual certain number. In addition to shifting blame to their mistress and each other, they also implicated a deceased servant by the name of Darvulia, who served as a maid and governess. And two of the women and the male sent, uh, servant were, were sentenced to unaliving, which was quickly carried out. The fourth spared immediate execution, but what happened to her afterward is not quite known. Um... Another woman who supposedly used magic to help Elizabeth Bathory was also executed. After these executions, Thurzo continued to investigate the Countess, and one witness stated that Bathory herself had listed 650 victims in her papers, though the number of victims varied in other testimonials, and the Countess's exact unaliving toll still remains unknown to this day. The evidence gathered by Thurzo also included at least 289 different witness statements. And again, as she was a noble woman, she was not put on trial. Instead, she was just isolated and basically walled up in the castle, Castis, where she stayed until she passed away. And then she was later buried on the grounds at Castle Castis in what is now Castis, Slovakia. And that is the story of Countess Elizabeth Bathory of Hungary who is purportedly one of the most notorious female serial unalivers, vampires, true crime vampires in history. Till next time, y'all stay safe and stick around because I'm going to be starting a new series. I think this is going to be on the topic of things such as grimoires and other types of esoteric um, and mystical books, if you will, including apocryphal texts um, and possibly codexes. So that's what I've been looking at to do next. Stick around. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed the true crime vampires in history. Until next time, stay safe and enjoy your spooky season.